congratulations. At this point, your Brownian knowledge is getting quite sophisticated. And by the end of this lesson, it will be off the chain. Specifically, we're gonna learn about how to use the chain object. When you fire up a forked mainnet, you have the capability of time traveling. Quite literally, you can fast forward and rewind your blockchain and go back and rewrite history. It has the capability of creating a single save point called a snapshot. So you can freeze, run a bunch of transactions and then rewind. We're going to take advantage of this. We previously saw how we can stake into a rewards gauge. And we're going to take a look at all these different pools on curve, actually figuring out based on real blockchain data, which is gonna give us the best rewards. You could always use this calculator, but we're interested in seeing the actual snapshot of what does our rewards from curve look like after a day. And we're gonna accomplish this by using the chain. We're gonna stake into a pool, fast forward a day, claim our rewards, see how well they did, repeat the process ad nauseum until we find out the best yielding curve pool. We're going to do what we can to make this concise, but this will probably end up stretching into a couple of units. We'll run our imports. And in many ways, this is going to be pulling in knowledge from all of our previous lessons. The mintable fork token we'll be using to mint die, which will then deposit into three pool. In the last lesson, we saw how we could use conf test and we created a load contract function, which is a very simple way of pulling in a contract if it exists in our local database, or if not, running the more expensive call to etherscan. We're also going to modify this function using the zero address property. The zero address is simply 0x0000. It's what gets returned if there is not a contract at that address from many contracts. So we're going to simply return none rather than throwing an exception. Now let's pull in some globals. We're going to be working with accounts zero. However, if you happen to have your own account handy, feel free to just plug it in here and you can see how your account would do given your current curve position. We're gonna write this entire thing in an abstract way. So if you currently have a position, you can work with that. We use this load contract function to import the registry. Previously, we've seen how useful the registry is. We're gonna use it a lot. And we're gonna work with a new contract this time called the minter. The minter is what you use to actually claim rewards. It has a mint mini function, which allows you to claim from up to eight pools at a time. It also has the token property, which simply returns curve. Since we're gonna be calculating the balance of curve, we need this property. So we'll go ahead and load curve so we can have that across all of our contracts. And now let's spec out what our main Brownie script is going to look like here. Our account, because we pull this in from a pre-built account, account zero, will always have an account's balance of zero, but we'll first start by checking the initial value in case you currently have some curve rewards accumulated. Then we'll assign die, loop through all pools that accept try pool. So we'll actually put the die in the try pool. After we're done with our loop, we will print our strategy summary. Seems simple, right? I guarantee it's gonna take a little bit more than this. Let's go ahead and start filling this out. Our strategy will assign to a dictionary and we're gonna create a function which we'll fill in later called calc curve value. This function we'll call will be stateful. So we'll make sure that it returns the exact same blockchain state that we assigned but we will use this function to run a blockchain based transaction where we claim all of our curve tokens and count them, and then we'll revert it. We'll call this the initial balance. Again, for my account, it will be zero. For yours, it may be more. And we'll go ahead and print off what this looks like. So far, so good. To assign die to the try pool, we're going to piggyback off of the stake script that we built previously, and we'll assign this into a new function. This is simply where we mint die. 
and we assign that die to our account by adding it to our three pool. And we can get rid of the registry here that's not needed. We already have that imported in our globals. And we want to replace accounts zero with the whale address in case you're using a different one. And we'll return the pool so we have a loaded tri pool contract at the conclusion of this. Then with tri pool, we'll create an LP token. This function is the first of many that we're going to get from the registry. So at this point, we now have $100,000 in DAI staked in tri pool. So we're going to do a loop. Through every single curve pool. So that's a bit excessive. There are ways to do this faster, but we're just doing a quick and dirty method. What we want to find is every single pool that accepts three pool. So what we'll do is we will, for each pool, we will pull it into a contract. And then we're going to run another loop over all the coins within each pool. As I mentioned, this is this probably the slowest way we could possibly do it. It's the most exhaustive possible search. Let's call this pool index in range. We'll call this registry get in coins function on our pool. And we want the zero with item of the list that's returned. And now that we're in here, we're gonna run our check. Is the pool coins at this current pool index equal to the tri pool LP token? If so, then let's run our operation. Our operations will put as a function to fill in later where we'll pass it the pool we're working with, its current index offset, and we'll give it the loaded tri pool LP. Once this is returned the pool name and the pool value, we will assign this to the strategy, strategy dictionary. And we will simply print this so that while the script is running, we can test to make sure it's looking good. Finally, for the strategy summary, we'll use some Python knowledge to sort it. We'd like to reverse sort it so we see the highest yielding pools up top. We'll use a lambda function for this. If you'd like to learn more about that, check out other tutorials on lambda functions but this is simply reverse sorting by the final element and at this point we will print the key and value in a final summary pretty good all that's left to do is to fill out some of these functions 